time now to take a little cruise on a big custom machine, Suzuki's VS1400 Intruder. Now the Intruder first arrived on the North American custom scene back in 1985, but back then it was limited to a middleweight displacement of 700 cc's. All that changed two years later, when Suzuki boosted the Truder's displacement to 1,360 cc's. That's 20 cc's more than Harley-Davidson's blockhead evolution. But the 1400 shares very little in the engine department with its little brother. The big one, as we like to call it, has an air-cooled front cylinder and an oil-cooled rear. It also uses three valves per cylinder instead of four, and has a four-speed transmission instead of a five. The shaft delivers the power to the rear wheel, where you'll find a pair of preload adjustable shocks. Meanwhile, the stops are handled by a single disc up front and out back. This week we invited contributing editor Larry Strung to sample the VS1400, and in turn he invited a Harley owner to see if this cruiser really is the big one. It's definitely a big V-twin, Dave. Uh, take a look at it. It's got that V-twin styling and lots of chrome. That's what I liked about the, this bike. The styling is, uh, was really one of the best parts. And look at this uh, muffler uh, and the shiny chrome on the top of the engine. It's really a splendid looking bike. Mostly it's a matter of styling. The bike's well styled and uh, you know, lots of chrome, lots of shiny bits and pieces. Lots of attention to detail. You know, it seems as if they've gone to great lengths to cover every bolt head and things like that with little, little chrome fittings and whatnot. It, it's designed for the, the kind of person that wants to ride rather than spend a lot of time on their bike, I think. As you look at it, it's got a shaft drive, so there's very little maintenance involved there. And I guess this type of detailing with lots of nice chrome fittings and things like that, it doesn't require a lot of time and maintenance and, and even cleaning it up. This engine's a lot quieter, especially at the top end. You don't have that sewing machine noise that you sometimes hear on Harleys. And, uh, and you don't have the, the big throaty sort of loud engine noise while you're riding. And for some people, that's a big advantage. Uh, this bike, uh, you could ride for a long time w without being annoyed by the, by the noise. It's a very civilized bike to ride, uh, not much vibration. And uh, as Larry said, it's got power to spare. I was, I was surprised. It gets up and, and goes uh, at the slightest urging. It's uh, a very powerful, quick bike. The most comfortable range I found with this bike was sort of between maybe 80 and 100 kilometers an hour. Um, I found the bike to be a little bit cumbersome handling around town, and uh, the, the engine does get buzzy if you try and go much more than 100 kilometers an hour. But one thing I'll say in its favor, uh, as a Harley rider, I found this bike to be a little easier to handle than, uh, than a Harley. It's, it's, it feels lighter to me. It's a little easier to have it uh, turn a sharp U-turn. It doesn't feel like you're going to let it go or drop it. it. It's quite a nimble bike. That's right. And I'm a bit, of a, I think. a bit of a speed demon from time to time. And a couple times a day I gave it a good crank and uh, this bike performs well right up into the 140 plus range and mm -hmm. uh, with some despair. So I, I didn't feel constricted at any one particular speed level. It would go fast in third, uh, it would go fast in fourth. It really often didn't matter what gear you were in. If you gave it the gas it, it would respond well. and. Uh, uh, that seemed to be the thing that I came away with uh, most of all was uh, how well it responded uh, power-wise and that's important to me and anybody who likes uh, big V-twins. Clutch action is actually quite good. It's a hydraulic clutch. You can see with the master cylinder here and the, the levers are dog-legged so the reach isn't so high and of course the leverage is very, very light. I like the controls as well, Larry. Uh, I found that uh, the clutch and the brake were, were much easier than, uh, than the Harley equivalent. There seemed to be lots of braking power. Yeah, it's not the kind of bike that you just use two fingers on the front brake and that's it. I mean, with these type of bikes, typically you use both the front and the back brake together and quite heavily to get the bike to stop, but it stop it does. There's no question the bike is an eye catcher, Larry, and that's uh, one of its big features. Uh, there are a lot of bike riders uh, like myself that are weekend uh, bike riders and we don't, uh, you know, we don't ride our bikes for four and five hours, that's when the car comes out. Uh, but for a two-hour Sunday afternoon ride, uh, this bike is excellent. Um, it's just not designed for the trip to Montreal. Uh, you, you'll notice there isn't a windscreen, and, and there are limited, I guess, abilities to uh, personalize this bike by putting on uh, saddlebags and windscreens. I'm not sure that you would be able to do that easily. So for the long haul, you might choose another bike. But for us weekend riders, uh, this bike performs well on the highway, and for the, certainly the length of time I'd be riding, uh, 
it's perfect for that kind of trip. This bike uh, is uh, all souped up and an attractive eye catcher. Just to recap, on the downside, Larry found the big intruder to be slow steering. He also thought taller riders would find the riding position cramped, while Mark had trouble with the turn signal indicators and switch. On the upside, both riders were thoroughly impressed by the VS1400's custom styling. Mark gave the Truder's low seat height a competent two thumbs up, and everyone loved the Suzuki's smooth, powerful V-twin engine. This really is the big one.